Welcome back to the LiDAR Basics video series. This is part five, creating rasters in Surfer from LiDAR points. LiDAR point clouds can be turned into raster surfaces using Surfer. This could allow us to create a digital elevation model or DEM, canopy height models, digital surface models, uh, etc. In this video, we are going to be showing how to create a DEM and a digital surface model and then a CHM, a canopy height model. So part one, creating a digital elevation model or a DEM. So first we're going to open up our software, which is Surfer 12. There are more current versions. I just have 12 on my desktop. Um, so there's different views you can have. We're in the window view right now, which is what we're going to keep for the purposes of this exercise. So to start, we want to get our data into it. So we go into grid data. So this is where we're going to navigate to those TerraScan classified files that we just created in our last videos. Um, so I'm going to find those. One thing to note is this is going to be an LAS format. So I'm just grabbing the ground file because we're doing a digital ele elevation model. If you have it in LAS, you can convert it to LAS in TerraScan. So we're going to open it up. We're going to select X, Y, Z. And it doesn't actually matter here if we have all the classes or just one of the classes because we just have ground class. This can take some time. So for the purposes of this video, we're just going to skip the processing time. Once that's done processing, you're going to see this grid data window pop up. And here you're going to see gridding method. So this is where we can change how we want to grid our data. So we're going to go with triangulation with linear interpolation. Um, and then we're going to decide where we want to output our grid file. So we're going to open up the file, browse to where we want it, and you're going to do it in float Esri float grid format, so the LFT. Um, I'm going to call mine tutorial ground DM. Um, just name it something informative for yourself. And here we're going to see our grid line geometry. Notice that our pixels start and end on whole numbers and don't have edge effects. So we typically round up the minimums in the x, y directions and round down the maximums in the x and y directions. This will cut off the edges slightly. Um, and we're going to create the spacing as one. So. Okay, and another thing you can do is click into advanced options. This will give you a little bit more information about the gridding method. So for example, if we were doing inverse distance to power, you can define a search radius in here. Um, yeah, so we're just gonna do triangulation with interpolation though, and we're gonna press okay. And just a fair warning, this can take a really long time. Mine took up to an hour and a half, and that's a smaller data set of four by four kilometers. So I do recommend that if you have a larger data set, use individual tiles like the ones we created in TerraScan recently uh, to create your DEMs and then stitch them together at the end. So once it's done loading, you're going to see this window pop up here. Um, which I'm just going to exit out of because I don't really need it. Close that as well, our gridding report. And then I'm going to go into Map, New, and we're going to go to Image Map. So you're going to open it up and you're going to select your float or your FLT file. Press Open. And there you have it. We have a DEM, a digital elevation model. Another way to view it, you can go into New and Shaded Relief under Map. And again, the float file, press Open, and here we have our Shaded Relief image. So you can actually see the wetland areas pretty well here. So our next step is to create a digital surface model or a DSM. So we're back in our same surfer window. We're going to go to 
grid and data. We're going to select all data this time. So this is our all vegetation and our DEM and we're going to open that up and select X, Y, and Z. And here we do have more, more than one class unlike the ground. So we're just going to keep it all selected though. So we're going to press OK. And this might take a while. So once again, once it does load, you'll see the grid window here. Um, so we are going to be making our DSM. So we want to go into gridding method and we're looking for data metrics. So down here. And you're going to click on advanced options. And you're going into Z order statistics and we're selecting the maximum. And then we can go into our search to define our search radius and some of this information. So, so I'm going to keep the number of sectors to search for. We're going to look at the maximum number of data to use from all sectors and I'm going to use 10,000, just a really large number. Same here, 10,000. And then I'm going to do minimum number of data as two and blank node as three. And then I want my search radius to be similar to what was done in my DEM. So we're going to do a radius of one um, and one here as well. And then we're going to press OK. And yeah, so we want our X and Y min and max to be the same as what we did in our DEM. So I'm going to round this one up, round this down, and I'm going to want my spacing one, and round this up, round down, and spacing of one as well. It's totally fine to keep the number of nodes here uh, as what they defaulted. So we're just going to double check, make sure all of those numbers stuck. We're all good. And now we're going to press OK. And now is time to wait. This might take a while again. So we're back here. Um, we can see the DSM has finished gridding. So we're going to press OK. Go into Map and New. We're going to go into Image Map just like we did with our DEM. And we're going to click on our DSM float, press open, and it's right there. So we can view it in a different way, same as that other one, the shaded relief map. I'm going to press the same float, and here you go. And you can see, if you zoom in, looks like little individual trees. So there we go, our DSM is created. This part is going to be creating a canopy height model using Surfer Math. So we've got our DSM on top here. That's what this is. You can click it, move it over. We've got our DSM again, just in the image, and our DEM. So, um, you can see it right there. It's the ground one. Um, so, and that's the DSM. So I'm just going to delete the shaded relief one, move this over so we get a better visual. And we're going to go into and math. And you'll see this window pop up. You're going to have to add the grids. So DSM and ground are what I'm looking for. So click on the ground float and the DSM as well. Press open and you'll see the two of them pop up here. Now you'll see variable A and B and they're assigned to different ones. You can hold your cursor over top of the input grid and it'll show which one it is. So the DSM minus the DEM equals our CHM. So in our case A minus B so ground is B, so our DEM, 
And we're going to press, oh, we're going to name it first. And we're going to change it to Esri format. And I'm going to call it tutorial 001CHM. Uh, and press save. And press OK. And this should happen pretty quickly depending on the size of format you have. So mine's already done. Press OK. And you can go into map. And press shaded relief map and locate your CHM. And you'll see it looks a lot like the shaded relief version of the DSM, which isn't surprising, but that's what we're looking for. So a good thing I like to do is to pull it into ArcMap. So here I am. I'm going to navigate it to it. You can see they're already in Esri format, so they're easy to find in ArcMap. Press Add. Um, so I added my CHM, my DSM, and my DEM. This top one that we're viewing is my CHM. And you can see by the low to high um, that it's really actually the height of the trees now that you're seeing. So just like TerraScan, there's a lot more functionality to Surfer. There are so many different things you can grid and ways you can grid. Um, you can use different gridding options. You can go into data metrics and go into advanced options. And you can grid by range, which is another way to do your CHM. Um, you can do IQR, which is very useful in LiDAR research, uh, standard of deviation, coefficient of variation, uh, RMS. These are all very useful things to do. Um, and the biggest functionality that's useful is this search ability to change the search radius. Uh, this is something that other tools can't always do.